आई वी एम हाई आई एम सत्यजीत हाई आई एम रचेता वेलकम टू पेपर बैक बाई दी ओपन लाइब्रेरी प्रोजेक्ट today we have a very very special episode for all our listeners in the first half of the episode satyajit and i will discuss the power of asking followed by a super inspiring interaction with yuval noah harari and some of the 21 lessons for the 21st century discussed by him at length at a media event in mumbai in the second half we also discuss brave new world by aldous huxley and other books that he recommended to our listeners followed by a short clip by professor harari as to why he recommends these books let's listen in i'd like to start this episode by discussing the power of asking in many of our previous episodes we discussed the fear of failure which often leads people to play to not to lose rather than play to win by this we mean we often shy away from asking for what we want or simply trying something new because we fear that we will fail Just recently we received an email from Penguin India that Professor Yuval Noah Harari will be delivering a lecture in Mumbai on 16 December and of course we were delighted to go Ordinarily I would have applied for the event left it at that and felt ecstatic that we would be getting the opportunity to hear this thought leader but instead we wrote to his team requesting Professor Harari to come on our podcast during his stay in Mumbai Although Professor Harari couldn't come on the podcast due to time constraints he did oblige us with his five non-fiction book recommendations and the chance to attend the prestigious media event and interact with him personally Sometimes all it takes is for us to ask put your dreams wishes and hopes out there in the universe and you will be surprised at how much you will be offered in return like professor harari rightly says it's all about asking the right questions with this thought satyajit and i will be happy to share his lessons and recommendations on today's podcast thank you rachita we'll be right back after this Hello everybody, welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please make sure that you do. We're IVM Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please, please do. With the upcoming election season just around the corner, in case you really want to deep dive into some of the issues that matter, you should check out some of the shows on our network. Shows like Ganatantra, The Seen and the Unseen, The Prakriti Podcast, Pulia Bazi, and even How to Sit and Look into Some of the Issues That Really Do Matter. This week on Cyrus Says, Cyrus is joined by Tripti Khamkar. Tripti talks about how she got into acting from a young age, convincing her family, discovering her comedic talent, and her very own podcast, Gold Cup. On Shunya One, Varun Deshpande from the Good Food Institute joins us to talk about the Good Food Institute and the work that they're doing. On Thalle Harate, our Kannada podcast, Pawan and Surya discuss the Indian judiciary and all that we need to know about its citizens. On Paisa Vesa, Anupam hosts an hour-long special with Anil Ganani, head of passive investments at DSP Mutual Fund, and Mukesh Agarwal, CEO of NSE Indices, India's largest index and index service provider. This week, look out for the 50th episode of the Habit Coach podcast. Host Ashton Doctor is joined by a special guest on this one. And with that, let's continue with your show. Welcome to Paperback by the Open Library Project. I am your co-host Satyajit, otherwise known as Onion Knight in most food circles. I am hosting this podcast with my partner Racheta Sharma. Hi guys, my name is Racheta and I'm an ex-banker who gave up my banking profession to follow my passion and run libraries across the world. The Open Library Project is a non-fiction book library service offered to businesses on a subscription basis. We are trying to move away from the run of the mill library concept and setting up rotational and locational curated libraries at co-working spaces, corporates and business incubators. The idea here is to create value, build a knowledge community and encourage a growth mindset amongst our members. Today on the show we'll be discussing 21 lessons for the 21st century by Yuval Noah Harari, whose lecture we had the privilege to attend in December. Yuval Noah Harari is an Israeli historian specializing in macro historical processes and the history of war. He is a professor of history at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and author of three bestsellers. Harari's first three books were published in relative obscurity, though received acclaim among war historians. Influenced by Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs and Steel, and published in 2014, Harari's fourth book, Sapiens, a sketch of the history of humankind, made him an international intellectual superstar. Homo Deus was written as a sequel to Sapiens and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century revisits some of the ideas analyzed in these two books. So let's dive in. 
I'm sure all our listeners who've read Sapiens and Homo Deus would know that, um, you know, if you've loved those books, there's no reason not to love 21 Lessons from the 21st century. The good thing about Professor Harari is that he gives a very fresh perspective to the already existing, uh, you know, ideologies and uh, the history of humanity. And he gives a bigger picture on uh, how technology is going to be affecting our lives. The book is uh, divided into five chapters, which cover the technological, the political and also, you know, spiritual changes that we go through in this century. So although we'll be discussing only uh, 21 lessons for the 21st century, we had a couple of our guests on earlier episodes discuss the other books as well. Dikshad Vivedi was the author of Letters to Gargal. She discussed Sapiens, which again was one of my favorite and personal favorite books. It gave me a completely different perspective True. on how to look at things. And similarly with Homo Deus, when I read that book, it again reinforced that, you know, there is... There is always a different way to look at the same data to make your own newer interpretations. If it's if the data is put in the right, correct context, you're able to really draw more conclusions from that same data. Yeah, absolutely. So, like the first point which uh, he discusses, Satya, is the technological challenge, right? Right. Which is where uh, he's talking that big data is watching you. And you know, we all are aware now with mm. the various, um, you know, technology that's available, Facebook, Instagram and the likes. It's uh, very difficult to keep your data secure. And also... Since we are being technologically driven, there is also the fear that one day technology would be, you know, um, controlling us and or rather the people who control technology would be controlling the future. Right. So yeah. I think uh, during the interaction at the media event as well, someone did bring up the point of technology and how it's going to drive humans. Yeah. And Professor Harari was quite... Uh, he, in fact, made an astute observation, at least was astute to me at that point, which was that, uh, you know, uh, intelligence in the form that we understand it currently, it leads us, the people who chase just intelligence land up uh, reducing the amount of empathy that they have in their lives. Right. So technology definitely supplements a lot of the intellectual pursuit of uh, a human but uh, in some ways it takes away from the empathetic pursuit which is uh, something that we all need to recognize in this 21st century i think that's one of the challenges that he talks about when he talks yeah. about uh, in fact he extends to that by talking about how um, you know work is going to be wiped away like humans right. are not going to have right. any work for themselves right. in the centuries to come so uh, that's one of the factors which we should be that's what he says that we should be asking these questions and realizing that you know what is the power of this technology and how it's going to drive us in the future Another point he talks about is the political challenge, which is basically how, you know, we have had various civilizations going uh, and, you know, uh, there are so many countries with so many diverse cultures, but still there are points, like if you remember when he mentioned that, you know, for sports, mm -hmm. people from various countries, they all come together. You know, if it's a cricket match, there are various countries playing, but they're still following certain rules and norms right. and trade for example, is one of those, you know, factors which keeps countries bound together. So right. we can mutually coexist. And I think that's what he's trying to propagate. Definitely. In this point. So the next thing that he mentions in, in the book, 21 Lessons, is uh, despair and hope. So what about uh, despair and hope did he talk about at the event? So he was basically talking about, in fact, there was a person at the event. This is really interesting for everybody listening. He asked him if he'd like to be, we all know, Yuval Noah Harari is a thought leader. But they asked him if he would like to be a guru. And right. um, it's very interesting how he said that he does not wish to be a guru. And the reason for that is because he feels the minute... You know, somebody follows a guru, they stop thinking for themselves. And the minute you stop thinking for yourself, you're always going to blindly follow someone, whether it's right or wrong. Right. So he, uh, you know, promotes the fact that you should ask questions and you should uh, probably, you know, discuss, put it on your political agenda and discuss these questions, but not follow someone blindly as a guru, 
which is not his aim and that sounds uh, it's, yeah it's very profound and sounds very profound yeah yeah, yeah very profound also he also said for himself i remember that you know the minute i start thinking of myself as a guru that's one of the biggest dangers because then i'll start believing what i say is true without yeah. even having proof for it just from all the yes men around or just from my own belief so i found that really profound and so humble in a person who is he's captured the attention of the world over the last 4 5 years right yeah and it's so, all about a perspective with you know driven by facts but still just his point of view on it i think being an historian uh, his his hold on facts and how the facts have affected our lives over the last few centuries is really so clear and it comes out in the books itself absolutely so yeah you were mentioning truth in the right so yeah. the uh, one of the uh, one of the points that he makes is about truth in 21 lessons it's one of the sections in the book and like you said earlier that uh, you know there are teams all over the world that follow the same rules yeah and uh, so that's what he was actually trying to say in one of the points that he made was that uh, you know we all need to agree on a certain singular truth yeah and agree on that these are the rules of that truth and that's what will unite the world in in the future it's not that we don't agree right now we do in terms of sport we do in terms of a lot of in trade like you mentioned yeah but uh, still when it comes to political alliances and the whole you know global order mm. if you might say then we are still lacking but it's not unheard of for it to happen and he was all he was very full of hope saying that you know uh, this is something that could be tackled maybe in the next coming centuries yeah if we are asking the right question yeah, that's right <laughs> That's yeah. right. So the final, you know, the book ends with resilience. It mm-hmm. talks about uh, meditation, and um, from the media event also, I remember that he spoke about meditation very fondly. He's a spiritual person, I would say, and uh, he said that you know, meditation gives him a lot of peace, and it sort of uh, collects his thoughts together. And uh, everybody should be propagating, uh, you know, meditation and being calm or collected. right and also about education like you know how we should basically work towards self discovery and critically right. analyze ourselves rather than trying to learn more facts and figures and data it's more about critical analysis at every point in your life it's so about how to think more than oh, yeah. you know like so one of the takeaways from the book is that education needs to not burden us with more information but it needs to guide us through the information already available so that yeah. we can use it in the best way possible yeah i think that's something what he, uh, that i think uh, coincides with the ethos of the library where we are able to curate and provide learnings in terms of the areas that you have interest in absolutely it's basically you know he urges schools to teach children how to critically analyze themselves and you know ask the right questions about climate and global change i think and all of those things skills very necessary to navigate yeah. the future that we're going to be going through yeah it's a great book and we had the opportunity to get it signed yeah. and we had the opportunity to even interact with such a great thought leader of our times and we felt blessed just to be in that same room and we were on the front row so yeah. very close by to professor arari so i really hope this information helps you all and you all do read 21 lessons for the 21st century on that note we're going to take a short break and we'll be back after this Hi my name is Anupam Gupta I'm B50 on Twitter I am the host of Paisa Paisa the show that talks money on my show I speak to experts from every field of money and finance from stock markets equities debt funds credit cards life insurance every possible area of money and finance that you can think of we even did an episode on cryptocurrency I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere robo advisory startups just name it we've got it At Paisa Paisa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday, and you can listen to my show on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have. Paisa Paisa is brought to you by Paytm Money. Welcome back. We are still discussing Professor Harare's book Twenty Fun Lessons for the Twenty First Century and the media event that we had the privilege to attend. And here's a clip saying why he would recommend the books that he did. You know, there are so many books out there in the world, and especially if you talk about science books. So every science book can teach you something, but most books they they add just a small, a few more facts to the pile of facts that that you know. 
I, what I find is really the most interesting books are the books that take the pile of facts and rearrange it in a new way and enable you to see the world differently and to ask new questions that you didn't even ask before. So this is usually my, my basis for recommending a particular book. Your books really do give a very new, new perspective. perspective. Yeah. First book we're going to talk about is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And Rasheeta, you'll remember the day that we got the email back from uh, Professor Harari's team. How excited I got that this book was on <laughs> his recommendations because I read this book maybe 15, 20 years ago yeah. and I have been not only recommending it but Gifting buying it, it for yes. people <laughs> for the last uh, yeah, 15, absolutely. 20 years. So I was really excited. So let's get into it. Brave yeah. New World... Uh, the reason I like the book so much is that it completely changed my perspective on what a utopia or a dystopia may be. Hmm. So this were, this book is a science fiction book written by Aldous Huxley, one of one of the prolific science fiction writers who really uh, put things in a different context. What this book really taught me was that the future that we are imagining for ourselves maybe 100, 200 years down the line is so different from the future that's going to come to exist because no one, maybe even 100, 200 years ago could Mm. have predicted the future that we stay in today. So that's what the book really does. It's a short story about a man in the future. Yeah, it's very interesting that, you know, so I like how the book starts with talking about how we've, you know, science has been able to achieve cloning of identical embryos. And then, you know, they divide it into alpha, beta, gamma, delta and epsilon. Epsilon. So, yeah. which is much like the Hindu caste system. It's like a caste yeah, system. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, the highest would be the alpha who are the mo- prettiest looking and most intelligent people. And then, but also the genes that make you feel bad have been edited out of your existence. Yeah, so, like so if you're a beta, you're happy to be a beta. If you're a gamma, you're happy to exactly. be a gamma. Exactly. And so, a gamma been, is made to be less intelligent, the right. embryo, and you know, not to think as much. But that gamma food. himself would never know, right? That's yeah. that's what really got me thinking that is this what we're really striving to? Is this utopia? Is this dystopia? Because it just puts you in that. It puts you in that weird position where you're like, oh, hey, wait a second. I don't know if this is the future that I want, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's what happened to me. That's why I've been and giving it to people because I just think that it changes your perspective on the way you think about the future. Professor Harari says, right? He says that, you know, if we are going to alter everything, machines are going to control everything. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. that's that's the manic that we're going to create. Correct, so, correct, correct. Yeah. That's a great book. And um, the next book he recommended was Enlightenment Now, which is by Steven Pinker. Right. And um, I think this is one of uh, Professor Harari's favorite books because it's a lot in the line of, you know, evolution, humanity, in the ways that he talks about in terms of global um, climatic change or, you know, if it's about political um, disruptions that are, you know, existing in our nations. So... What do you think about this book? You know, why do you think anybody should be reading this book? For me, I think the reason that someone should read this book is because it gives a very different perspective to AI. And it says that, you know, a lot of our thoughts are conditioned. So people are conditioned to believe that, you know, this is how things are going and this is always how they should be. Right. But um, it's probably not that. And um, yeah, it gives you a very fresh perspective on of the various issues that we are dealing with today. And maybe a new way to ask questions about the various issues that we're dealing with today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The next book we're moving on to is Guns, Germs and Steel. So this was the book that actually inspired Inspired Professor Harari to write Sapiens, which uh, I think is still at the top of the bestseller list uh, across the world. Right. So this book also talks about uh, history in a similar way, presenting facts and giving a different perspective to the same facts. Yeah. In fact, it uh, talks about 13,000 years of history, which they've sort of gone through to, you know, draw this conclusion that it's not the intelligence that makes a country superior to another. But it's actually how you're geographically located or, you know, the sort of how you use the steel and ammunition for your immunity and how you use your resources around you. So a lot of your, you know, placement geographically is the reason why certain countries are superior and certain are still developing, which is 
absolutely true if you look at it you know it in reminds the me about uh, we had anirudh kani sethi on the podcast right, the other day right. from echoes of in- from the echoes of india podcast and he in fact mentioned a book uh, against the grain yeah. which uh, talks about how so society is developed uh, agriculture wasn't a development of we were forced yeah the, yeah. the kings actually forced the farmers to do agriculture and that's how society is developed so yeah. it's just uh, it's such a fascinating perspective i think even reading this book would give us a whole new view on the way we think yeah. i mean if it inspired sap- sapiens if it inspired yeah. sapiens definitely a must read <laughs> yeah <laughs> the next book we are going to talk about is chimpanzee politics this book actually compares the it compares the society of chimpanzees and how they work together in yeah, it, unison and how we are also just an offshoot of this chimpanzee politics and we're still following through right yeah they in fact it calls them political primates right. so it says that they are one of the few uh, you know breed of animals right <laughs> who basically understand are able to organize yeah they understand the power of reconciliation right. so they basically understand that you know a leader is not somebody who chooses to be a leader it's the, the you know chimpan they are yeah, group of chimpanzees or the people who are electing that leader they let him be the leader uh, in part and yeah and then they reconcile with that fact and move on as a group so it's very interesting how you know they've connected that to a fascinating uh, humanity a, f- a fascinating uh, comparison between yeah, humans I mean, and apes after all we've evolved from <laughs> we them, have so evolved from them we better yeah, be yeah. one not a <laughs> <higher>. <laughs> yeah and the final book we're talking about that professor harari recommended is the attention merchants yeah this book is really fascinating to me because he's basically spoken about something which is very very relevant to uh what you call influencers marketing right so i think in it basically talks about how we have a very short uh, attention span nowadays because we have an information overload right and um, the only people who really thrive in such an uh, atmosphere are attention merchants right. people who can draw your attention to what they are saying and sort of drive you politically or socially by uh, using that attention to you know like mold your mind to what they believe or they perceive and it's yeah. like something that one of my favorite speakers Gary Vaynerchuk always says is that hey i'm just here to trade your attention yeah. like just give it to me for 5 seconds and i'll give you something back in return yeah, so in fact it speaks about oprah and kim kardashian right. and exactly the kind of influencers who are there today so sounds fascinating definitely a must read for today's times and with that we are going to end this special episode of paperback A big thank you to all our listeners. You can follow the Open Library project on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook for latest updates on our events. And stay tuned for the next paperback podcast on IVM Podcasts. Happy reading. You can follow IVM Podcasts on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at IVM Podcasts. Did I just catch you on your way to work or did you end up pulling an all-nighter? Let me guess. You have a packed schedule for the day, the week, and probably the month and the year. That's a lot for your mind to handle, don't you think? This buzzing chaos also brings tons of negative thoughts. Am I right? Try spinning that bottle in a positive direction with me, Chetna, on the Positively Unlimited podcast every Monday on IBM Podcasts. It's time to change your life one alphabet at a time. Who said healthy food is boring? Who said raw veggies is just salads? Who said eating fats makes you fat? Look forward to my recommendations on healthy food and exercise hacks on the Kinetic Living podcast with me coach Urmi every Wednesday on the IVM app, website and anywhere you get your podcast from.